Hello everyone, today I want to talk a little bit about the differences between white label and open source and how you could use both of them to build your business or build a business. But you can also use them if, uh, as a way to build a tool that your, that your current business uses, uses or as another product that you are selling, selling from your business. This is geared mainly towards digital type businesses like marketing tools, software as a service type things, apps that you sell on Android or the iTunes Apple Store. But both are very good ways to get into a market that otherwise might be cost prohibitive. By using a white label service or, or open source, you are basically using someone else's infrastructure or code as a template to build your own business and offerings so that you can focus more on marketing and getting customers. Not only does that save you a lot of time, but it also saves you a lot of money not having to basically start from scratch. If you have a product idea, you know, a software as a service idea, or an app idea, chances are real good that there is something white label or something open source that you can build upon. But there are vast differences between the two, and I'm going to briefly discuss them now. Again, this is for digital businesses that live primarily in the cloud, since that's the whole premise of the DigitPyre podcast and the DigitPyre.com website. We discuss all of the ways you can hustle, invest, and live in this digital economy that we all find ourselves in. Before we start, my name is John Higginbotham, and you can find a lot of our other podcasts at DigitPyre.com slash podcast. You can find the the show notes for this episode and the resources that I discuss or talk about at digitalpire.com slash episode 41. You can find the podcast on, ma- on most major podcast platforms, and those are listed at digitalpire.com slash episode 41 and digitalpire.com slash podcast. So you can also download our podcast and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. So I'm going to talk about white label first. And white label is basically you're selling something that someone else, some other company has built and you are labeling labeling it as your own. I have problems with that word sometimes. So let's say that you wanted to start a marketing company. You market uh, you market real estate companies or you market any kind of industry, chiropractors or just whatever, and you want to have a business that you market to those businesses and you get leads for those businesses and you either charge them a monthly fee or a a cost per lead or whatever compensation scheme that you know that you come up with you can also handle their Facebook marketing their search engine optimization or just you know anything to get them uh, customers to their business and instead of starting from scratch and building all the tools that you would need to, to accomplish that you can search for white label solutions that you can label as your own, as if you had built them yourself. It can get very, very overwhelming thinking of all the things that you have to have or build in order to to just have one business, all the tools that you need. You don't want to have to have five or six different tools or even more that you use of someone else's and have their branding attached to it. So you want to try to keep everything in your own little ecosystem as much as possible. For example, if you build websites, you can market them. If you market, you can market to to chiropractors or churches or or you know any kind of professional service. And you could build them websites and market and offer them marketing services all under one umbrella. That umbrella being that your agency's name so you can build websites host them on your own on your own server your virtual server or shared server you don't actually own a data center or host anything yourself but you brand it as though you do 
And as far as the marketing services, there's a whole slew of places that you can offer marketing services under your own branding. So you can get set up pretty quickly and not have the huge overhead cost of building out everything yourself. And so there's a lot of advantages to that, but there's also a lot of disadvantages as well. The advantages being, you know, of course, that you don't have to have spent the money up front to build everything out and all the, the headaches that you have to endure doing that. But there are a couple of disadvantages too. And that is you are pretty much at the mercy of whoever your this, whoever service you are reselling, you are at the mercy of them staying in business and, and all that sort of thing, which is you know something that you constantly have to worry about. But you can lessen those worries by always having a backup plan, a backup provider, so you don't experience too much of an outage on your offerings. So you want to build everything around the 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 worry or the fact or whatever however you want to say that the business might not always be around that you are reselling and that brings me to a, a good point you want to make sure that you want to look for businesses that have been around you know a long time that white label businesses that have been around quite a while and you know the longer they've been around the, the better the chance that they're going to continue to be around in the future so that's pretty that's a pretty basic attempt that's a pretty basic explanation of white labeling. I go, I get more into depth on you know, a lot of the articles that I have written on NicheAppire.com. But now I want to talk about open source, and that's a different beast altogether. So now I'm going to talk about that, some of the how you can use open source software to build your business, and also some of the advantages and disadvantages of doing so. Okay, now for open source. I know this stuff can be <laughs> kind of stuffy sometimes. I mean, there's nothing worse than having a, a great idea for a project or a business and you just don't even know how, how, to, how to get it started. You don't know how to get it off the ground. And, you know, just these, these two basic things could help you do that. You know, so the getting it off the, or the starting it and the idea is the fun stuff. But you know how to to make it actually happen can be fun as well. You just have to have you just have to know the 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 basic building blocks to how to get it done. And we just got through talking about white labeling. Now we're going to talk about open source. And open source is where you actually have the code. And there's a lot of details that I'm not going to go on go, go into on this podcast about licensing and that kind of stuff. But there are, are repositories. One called SourceForge.net where you can actually get to get the code and build upon it to make it your own. So you're not ba you ba so it's like basically having a template that you're using and you can you could uh make it your own by adding features to it, taking features away or just doing whatever you would like to with it. And a lot of times if you if you if you're just beginning on being if you're starting out as being a developer like a an app developer or if you build websites or whatever, a lot of times uh the people that give you quotes on, you know, freelancer or what used to be odesk.com and things like that, they would they'll they'll basically get a, a product like an app that's similar to what you want or need, and they'll customize it. So a lot of the work is already done. But if you're just starting out, you may not know that. But if you go into the into the uh, relationship or you, you you put you put in a request for a bid, knowing the source forge or the the code that you're wanting to use you'll get a lot better results and save a lot of money and if you know how to code yourself you know that's even better but you know i highly recommend if you're a developer if you want to build apps or anything like that to have a basic knowledge of how to build a website and a basic knowledge of you know programming languages or just a basic knowledge overall of, of technology and Kind of like a general contractor is when you know they're building communities or houses or whatever. They don't necessarily know the developer himself or herself doesn't necessarily know how to wire the building, but he does know how to draw all the people together to to make that actually happen. He knows how to put the pieces to the puzzle together, and that's the developer's job in the analog world. And it kind of works the same way in the digital world. I'm not a fancy programmer. I don't have 
an in-depth knowledge of, you know, a lot of different programming languages. But I do know the basics of what I need or what to ask for. And a lot of times that's where the problem arises when you get, when you, when you get in a stalemate or you stall is because you don't know the right questions to ask. And sometimes there's unscrupulous people, and I'm, I'm maybe not even unscrupulous, maybe just not entirely honest or not forthright. I'm not sure what the term to use, but a lot of times, you know, you, they're going to charge you a lot more than than, would need, than you would need to be charged, basically because they're using a template. So a lot of the work is already done. So if you're wanting something very specific, they might spend an hour on changing the code and that props, you know, a brand new product that you probably paid a thousand dollars for and they had an hour of work in it, I mean, depending on their skill level. You know, and I'm not saying that's wrong in and of itself. I mean, it's all about, it's all about knowledge and you didn't know how to put those pieces together and they did. But you can save a substantial amount of money if you cut, cut that out and find the templates or the, the source code that you want to modify. And if you can do it yourself, even better. But I would highly recommend, you know, getting, you know knowing a couple languages or, or knowing the basics, of, the basics of what you're trying to do. Be like the general contractor in the digital world, even though there's no such, there's no such a thing. You know, in the analog world, a digital contract, or a contractor has to be licensed and take tests and all that kind of stuff. Nothing exists in the digital realm, which is a good thing and a bad thing. But, you know, you have to, it, it weeds out a lot of people. The, the barriers to entry are a lot greater because a lot of people just don't know where to even start. My point being, if you take anything from this short podcast, is that you don't have to be a, any kind of fancy developer or no, a bunch of computer languages or whatever to make your digital dreams become a reality. But you do need to know, or I advise you to know, some basic things that would help you save a tremendous amount of money, which would make your dream realization come even faster. Again, this is all for, you know, digital businesses in the digital world. But, you know, but the same thing in the analog world has been going on for a long time, but in a different way. You know, people license their name. You know, there's a, there's a big hotel or a big... I was, you know, I'm interested in condo hotels. They've always fascinated me. And there's a condo hotel back a long time ago that, you know, I was a lot younger, that a pretty famous person had their name on the building. You know, and I didn't know what I know now, so I thought that, well, he owns the building, and he's, so it must be a good thing, because his name's on the building, and he's always appeared to know what he was doing. Well, at the time, they were taking, you know, they're doing pre, they're they're doing pre-construction so you could buy into this condo building and you know put up x amount of dollars to have a condo in you know this very large building so you haven't bought it yet and from all you know all appearances it looks like it's a pretty good deal this person's famous for for you know being a real estate mongrel so how could you go wrong well it wasn't actually his building the owners of, or the, the developers of the building were just using his name. So he licensed his name out for the building, you know, which of, of course gives a, a immediate street cred. And so there's a lot of examples like that, but it carries over into the, the digital world as well. And you're using someone else's code and modifying it or adding features to make it your own. And the advantages to having your own code is, you know, primarily security. I mean, you know what's coming in and out. You, have, you can have someone look over the code and make sure there's no funny business going on or there's no data leaks, you know, because everything is yours. It's, it's pro, pro, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm thinking you could say it's pro, pro, proprietary almost. Not entirely because you didn't make it from scratch. So legally, I'm not sure if it would be proprietary or not. But still, you have access to the inner workings of the code. So you know that if uh, you're not sending all your information all over the, the planet for God only, know, God only knows who to, to read and pick up on, you're building your own infrastructure. And, you know, I want to say this very quickly. That's what a couple of pizza restaurants have done, I've noticed. For example, Pizza Hut and Domino's, they have their own apps they have their own infrastructure. They're not depending on these, these you know, the, the Uber Eats of the world and all these other uh, 
million food apps that you know really put really dive into the the revenue of the the restaurant and a lot of times the restaurants are are you know small business people and they can't you know sometimes they're not making any money on the food they're just hoping that the person comes back and actually eats in the restaurant so my point is when you have your when you have your own code your own source code you're not having to depend on anybody you're not having to depend on the person that you're or the company that you're reselling as your own you're not having to depend on them to stay in business i mean because that could shut you down very very quickly if you put all your eggs in one basket so having the actual source code and building it out yourself or having someone do it is you know a lot more i think it's, it's safer for a lot of different reasons you know the one being security and the other being that you're able to sustain it for a longer amount of time because you have the code you have the, you have the the ingredients to make adjustments whenever it's necessary or add features that you need that your white seller the white seller will not give you or can't give you or it's too cost prohibitive to make it happen so with everything good there is you know the, what comes along with that is the, the bad stuff and the negatives of having you know do, having someone's grabbing someone's uh the source code off of sourceforge.net or, or just whomever is that you have to be real careful about licensing and make sure that the original code is licensed that you were you're able to do that sometimes sometimes the, the person who who had who has written the original code does not want it to be resold in any way shape or form so you know if, if you're using it to sell then that could be a big problem for you and so you might not want to pursue that that particular app or software as a service or just whatever if you did not pay that if you didn't pay attention to that little detail you might go building on something that's going to get you in legal trouble legal trouble on down the road and nobody wants that so pay attention to the licensing another thing if you if you build an app or a software as a service you are responsible yourself for when things break so if you can't code yourself and you can't fix things yourself you're going to have to have someone that you can trust or someone that can fix things that's within your budget i know this from firsthand experience i've had i've had certain different things that ha have been written for me and when the app breaks or the the spot or whatever i'm building when it breaks, I don't know how to fix it, and so I need someone else to fix it for me. And if you don't have the source code, then, you know, you're out of luck. They're not going to be able to fix it. That's why if you do put in a, a bid for a, an app project or just whatever project on some of these freelancing websites, you want to make sure that you retain ownership to the source code. You have the source code, there's no strings attached, and you have a free break once the transaction is over you don't want to have you don't want the app to have any dependencies or, or something that keeps you tied to the person who built it you have to be very very careful about that i go over a lot of that in detail on uh the website digipire.com uh, i'm not going to go over all those details here but if you get anything from this uh short podcast is that if you have an idea for an app or a software as a service type thing, then you don't have to be a coder to make it happen. And you can do it very, I'm not saying very inexpensively, but it, you can put it within your reach. Because even if you code yourself, it would take hours and hours and hours upon, you know, it would take a lot of time to, to, you know, to, to build some of this stuff. Building an app is very expensive. I'm going to give you a couple examples of what I mean by software as a service and how you can build your own by piggybacking off someone else's code. Something that I have been wanting to do for a long time is have like a ledger for my, my digital business and all the projects that fall underneath that. I wanted it to be able to embed it into you know, a website I wanted to have a balance. I wanted to have a lot of things that something like Quicken could not give me. And I didn't, I would know where my data was going and not to some mega supercomputer 
that Quicken has. Not that I'm not that they would be interested in anything I'm doing, but you know, it's still nice to know that you have control of your data. So anyway, there's this there is this app, there's this not an app, it's a script that will it's basically an account it's a basically accounting software. And it has a lot of things, if not most of all the things that I want that I can't find in a lot of the other commercial type apps. So I was using it for, you know, internal purposes, but it's something that if you wanted to to sell to businesses, you can sell them basically like an accounting package for their for their for their business. And it's all done online. So you could have you could have your own something like Quicken, but it had to be multi-user. And you could sell that accounting software, you know, to the masses. Kind of like property management. You can you can build like a, a property management. Uh, you can build property management software that does the same thing. So online property management, where you you sell a service to landlords that that keeps track of all their rentals, that keeps track of uh, support tickets or issues and tenants and all that kind of stuff. And you can build that. Your you can sell it to sell it and market it to property professionals. And you can also do that white label as well. So if you're in real estate, if you're a real estate agent, you're a property manager or whatever, and you wanted to get into the digital side of things, you can open up a software as a service, like an online property management system or script that property managers can log in and keep all of their, their, their details, which, you know, that's a lot more involved than I want to go into on this podcast but that, you know, property management software and, and accounting software are two simple things that you can get up and running without having to incur a lot of expense. So you can make your biggest expense being market, the marketing of your business. But I like to have, I like to build things that I have an interest in myself or some, a, thing, a need that I have. Because I figure if I have a need for it, that, you know, there might be people out there that also have the need. So that's kind of where I start. I try to keep everything within my my sphere of of what I'm interested in. So an app is <clears throat> is based is, is an app you can get built as well for you know Android, iPhone or just whatever and do the same thing with that. So you don't need to spend $30,000 on an app you can build one yourself or hire someone to build it for you by using a software depository like SourceForge.net. <clears throat> There's similar places. I'm telling you, it will save you a, a huge amount of time and money to, to go that route. There is uh, something called Game Salad where you can, you can build apps with them within their system. And they have templates, they have all kinds of things where you, you could actually build your own app. But all that's a little more a little more involved than what I want to get into right now. That's for a later podcast. Like I said, if you get anything from this, is that your next great app idea or or any your next big idea might already exist, and you can modify it for your own personal needs. And you can you can either resell it or just use it yourself. So white label and open source are two excellent ways to get your foot in the door of a business idea that otherwise would have a lot of barriers to entry. We're living in some really amazing times, you know. Uh, that's it for today. You can check all the, the, the resources that I discussed on the podcast at digipire.com slash episode 41. You can browse around the site. I posted a lot of my my business ideas on there that use what I've talked that make use of what I've spoken about tonight. I have so many ideas that I would never be able to pursue them all in one lifetime, and I would never have enough money to be able to pursue everything. So I do share a few of those on our website digipire.com if you need some inspiration. I talk about everything about building a tech a tech service where you have where you sell technical services to businesses 
which you know biz commercial is where it's at that's where the most money is because most of the time they have more than, than one store or they have a lot more going on than your typical uh everyday consumer so i like to focus on the commercial aspect of uh, the i like to focus on uh commercial projects so anyway you can check out all of our podcasts at digipire.com slash podcast. You can look at the show notes and all the resources that I've spoken about on this episode at digipire.com episode. I'm sorry, digipire.com slash episode 41. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day, and I'm out of here. Bye-bye.